There we go. Oh, I don't have my camera on. There we go. Oh, wait, you just said that. It's fine. Uh, we got removal, double sapphire, hmm, we're gonna have to draw kind of well with this hand to be good, but it's like close, it's close enough. This is a uh, Bant Lady. Probably something similar to Novi's or Talia's build. Uh, raise a good start. Alright, we're going places. This is Tally's build kit. So the saber tooth and this voice is going to be needed. We should be able to hit another land drop at this point, but I am going to go ahead and fit. We've gas to the top, so we'll go ahead and bend the remnant of hatred just because we have a well of hatred. It's another ray. Okay. Oh, I mean, it might be a little loose to give away our fist shard drop, but I think we're okay just because, like, next turn we're going to slam the voice. Um, oh, is this, is this combo? We'll go ahead and loot now. Morgan's gift. This no longer has a use. I'm going to keep attacking because I'm just going to try and loot for a fast shard here. There it is. Basically, we have multiple must answer cards on the board, plus we get a call next turn, which is everywhere we want our, it's everywhere we want to be in life right now. So our opponent's just dead next turn if he doesn't play anything here. If he doesn't play something that can block one of the flyers, he's dead next turn or kill one of them. He's just dead. He, unless he could have a runebind here. Runebind is a very reasonable card, man. We have a lot of Morgan's gifts. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna play this out because this saves his life. Not that it really matters. Let's see if this Morgan's gift uh, resolves. If it does, we just kill him. There it is. So I'm assuming this is combo and not, I want to say this is a combo is what we're playing against. She, yeah, we're gonna draw. Really cutting 
waiting for this. There it is. I want to say this is combo. I could be wrong. Might not be combo. See, you know what? I'm just going to cut a scribe here. So for combo, we've got our Eternal Curators trying to just kill off their multiple turns combo. Um, and then we're also bringing Jouncings in just to kill uh, Rowdy Piper. Rowdy Pi killing Rowdy Piper is pretty relevant. Um, and we can do this at instant. The reason we're playing Jouncings over the Sabertooth is because we can do this at instant speed. Because like, there's just turns where they can go Rowdy Piper and then try and play something else and just reset themselves. Um, and so you just you want to kill it like right away. Uh, so they can't just go like super hard off. And then, like, also, this just kills, like, their other big things. Um, whereas, like, Sabretooth can just miss it. And then we're keeping in just three Seekers. We don't need the fourth one for this match. Especially with combo. But again, I don't know why you're playing Lady with combo. That confuses me. Yeah, that's great. We gotta turn to Ray. Start looting. Does everywhere wanna be in life? We got removal voice is just good value card. We just gotta target to bin with Ray, which is good. Sugar Puss, so this is combo, okay. So we're going to set up for a scribe here, because if he doesn't interact with it, we can uh, potentially just find a Morgan's Gift and just turn three clean house. Because we can just Morgan's Gift back our... Uh... There it is. So if he doesn't interact with a scribe, we just get a Morgan's Gift back, Seeker, call three. Start beating him down. I know that gives up our scribe too, but it also kills his boards. His like, it also kills his board, uh, which leaving both. Well, I don't really care about this, but leaving this alive is not good. Means we could just die to this. This just sees him too many cards in this deck. So we're getting hustled here. We're going to try and bait the hustle. Oh no, we're getting rebound. Okay. <laughs> Got him. See if he's got more interaction. Okay. Might have counter magic here, but I think we have to try. Go verdict. Okay. Gonna try and find blood here off the top of our library. Because the next turn we can try and verdict with Ray. Or try and uh, pitch the Morgan's Gift with Ray plus uh, 
have... Well, I guess either way, if, if this survives, we get to do that. Um, so next time we can potentially just, like, swing in with Ray, um, pitch the Morsum's Gift with Verdict up, which is really good. Which cleans, again, just cleans, which cleans them up even harder now. Um, and we get to keep her scribe. Hey, what's going on, the Wilson Eye and Lime Killer? Well, I was watching Seagull so play Overwatch, but I guess I can... <laughs> I'm playing Sapphire, though. Are you sure you want to do that? I mean, okay, so we get to get them really hard here. Um, Cause we got the verdict up for any bit of his interaction. And that's her. Uh, so for those of you just tuning in, I dropped so far. I got so much recovery I gotta make. That and you're not a dirtle deck. So I kinda am a dirtle deck if they let Scribe survive. Like if Scribe lives, I just gotta do lots of dumb things. Um, so real quick, the changeups to the 75 is we cut, um, this is, this is now the main deck. I mean, we cut the auctioneers. Uh, we don't need them anymore. Um, so we're playing three Rune Binds and then the four Sabertooth there. Uh, we got three Voice in the deck and three Excruciate. Voice has been absolutely a fantastic addition to the deck. It's a discard outlet, it draws cards, and it's also a good turn four blocker. Um, versus like aggro decks, and then our side up our sideboard plan is pretty straightforward. Um, Burdix for combo matches, Iron Inquisitors for the aggro matchups, Jouncings for basically anything we need to remove for a combo, um, Diamond Wild. Same old, same old. Uh, Scars of War, obviously, pretty uh, straightforward. And then we have three, we have one Eternal Seeker, so we get the fourth Seeker on the board because it's very much needed versus the Diamond Wild matchup. And then three Eternal Curators is the new addition to the deck. Uh, card's nuts. Card's insane. Uh, against Combo, they just have such a, they can't deal with this card. Um, they have such a hard time dealing with this card. And then, like, just getting rid of all their excess copies of, like, taking turns and stuff like that, you kind of just take away their, uh, their primary win con, and you put a 7-7 double damage on board. So, like, it just, they can't deal with it. And then, obviously, if the draw card combo comes back, um, yeah, turn 4, eternal, or, yeah, turn, uh, turn 5, eternal curator, or turn 3, eternal curator, whatever, uh, blows them out. Like, that's it. They're dead. Period. Dot. Um, so, yeah. Voice is a good card. You, There's so many games that, like, literally, I just, I top deck a voice and resolve it. And protect it for a turn with a rune bind and just win the game. Just literally because of that card. Hands fantastic. We get a turn to Ray. We get a scribe. We got a target to bend for Ray. Uh, it's going to be an, uh, an aggressive matchup, so. These remnants are going to hurt, but that's fine. Overall, I'm still happy with uh, Reanimator's position in the meta, especially since like not a lot of people are playing it. Um, so not a lot of people are prepared for it because of that. And like the, I mean, the turn five cock kill is real. Not a lot of people can deal with it. <laughs> Chug is pretty sweet. Chug is a really sweet card. There's a car. So we hit our resources here, we can kind of just set up to lethal him. Uh, we can set up actually to lethal him turn 4 here if he doesn't have the interaction for Scribe coming down. Oh yeah, you need some sort of graveyard hate. This deck is... This deck is very powerful, but really fragile to graveyard hate. And if, if graveyard hate's not there, most decks just lose to it. And that's why I still think it's a good choice. And, like, now that the fact that we have, like, decent, like we can kind of side into, like, a mid-range matchup. And so, like, the, the fact that we have decent removal, um, we have voice in the 75, like, we have a lot of things going for us. That's the other thing, too, is, like, the deck's ridiculously expensive. The deck has come down uh, a little bit. Not much, but a little bit.
Okay, so I want to bend this car. So I am going to let this... Uh, I'm going to let this Righteous Outlaw flip. For sure. I'm not going to take the free advantage off of... Uh, Cheating Scribe into play because I want this call in the graveyard just so I can literally set up to turn four him next turn. Basically, say deal with Scribe or die next turn. <sighs> What's better? Uh, countering or Brinks? To be honest with you, Brink. Brink just blows me out. Cause uh, countering, like, you're never you're never casting that Morgan's Gift by the end of the turn, right? Like it's not happening. Um, whereas, where you okay? So yeah, the removal. That's fine. We're gonna take a little bit of extra damage here, but that's okay. Whereas, uh, like yeah, so Reganalds, you never cast the card. Whereas like Brink, it literally burns the Morgan's Gift and takes all other copies of it out of my deck, right? And you get free value out of it. So like Brink is just better. I mean, Reganalds is more flexible. It's it's decent in this matchup. It's not exactly bad, but you're kind of just delaying me a turn, which sometimes can get you the win, which is a valid point for sure, um, but not always. Uh, we gotta keep this. So we're just gonna bend the theorize here. If he doesn't have a flyer next turn, he's going to be in bad shape. Well, I mean, you could sell that scribe for a con and a half. <laughs> he's a Jess guy. I pulled one, and I pulled two Kaw, and then bought my other two Kaw. I mean, I also cracked 50 packs of the Prime also. Oh, have a heart. Flight and crush. Okay, it's fine. Okay. I really like this card. I'm running two brain three Reganolds on the side of the deck I'm running them Okay, that that sounds reasonable. That sounds reasonable. Um Reganold's really good against the control esque decks that are kinda of showing up slash combo. Um and then uh Break obviously just blows out any graveyard strategy. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and loot here. Ooh, Runebind's really good. I think I'm still going to bend the rune bind though, just to guarantee I can set up to cheat some. Well, no. Caw, right? We want to calm? Yeah, we do. There. So I think I'm just going to dome him here. And force them to block here with the Repo Popper. Or he just dies. Has a decent match of your laws of hand destruction, bring, etc. Probably, yep. Hand destruction and brink is good. Oh, he just killed himself. Apparently, he didn't read the double damage clause. Okay, so he's an aggressive deck. Scars of War is good here. Jouncing is good here. Seeker's good here. Doombringer Cause is actually really medium minus versus the uh, aggressive deck, so we usually cut that. Runebind's actually fine versus this one. Uh, yeah, we're just going to cut all our cause. Uh, we just win by giant fatties double damaging. I know we just straight up stole a game last game. Um, actually, we want this. The ruin binds are kind of medium minus here, um, but I think we're just gonna cut. 
We're gonna cut a scribe. Poppers are good this format. They got a lot better uh, post rotation. Or not post rotation, sorry, post, post the new set. Like, the card is actually really powerful. Do I just actually cut the rune binds here? No, I can see cutting it through, guys. We kind of want to stay a little more mid range removal. We'll go 61 greed special, especially on the draw. And it's decent. It's a little punishing resource wise, but it's decent. So we can loot away some of these burn resources. Um, we get ruined by turn one. We can slow down this turn one play. Oh, we found a saber tooth too. That's really good. Still gonna end up if he uh, if he turned two righteous outlaws here. I'm still gonna end up ruined binding it. That's kind of weird. Trap. Whenever I play it, seems good, but never works out. Poppers, yeah. It feels like that, but like the the variance for it, like how do you put it? Um, it it's a ver it's a high variance card, but if you get on the good side of variance for it, um, it's ridiculously powerful, right? Uh, when this Damien Chair Champion deals... Okay, that's fine. We'll just go ahead and Sabertooth that next turn. We don't really have anything we want to bin with Ray anyways. Opening a 4 Remnant Hand versus the Aggro Dex though is kind of scary. But the fact that we get a curve into, like, next turn we're going to go Ray plus uh, Runebind. Which puts us in a really good spot. And then, like, curving into Voice is really powerful. Uh, most aggro decks have a hard time removing this right away. I know this one's playing uh, Decrees. But uh, most aggro decks just have a really hard time removing this right away. We're going to be forced to... Uh... Yeah, we're going to be forced to Runebind that, unfortunately. Think I'm actually just gonna play this out, just to take a turn off hurting myself here, instead of cycling it. Yeah, because we don't our charge power isn't doing anything for us right now. Oh, I guess I should have looted with Ray first. Actually, I should have looted away one of these remnants first to see what we got. This was technically a little fast faster than it needed to be. Hey, what's going on, Sergeant Vito? And Pufer, welcome, welcome. Playing some reanimator. Reanimating big stuff and things. Yeah, sorry, I had to cancel tomorrow. Uh, sorry again. Um, tomorrow's dad's plans change a little bit, and so tomorrow's like the only day that I can uh, that I can get him to answer some of my questions I have about reanimating my basement. Uh, we're going shopping tomorrow for uh, some subforming and stuff. And he is the man with all the knowledge. I'm gonna hold it, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna take, the, I'll take the extra four points of damage here. I think that's fine. I could also ruin bind this before he attacks. Depending on what he plays here. Yeah, I'll ruin bind it before he attacks, right? Because, like, say, I don't know if he's playing Mama Yetis or something like that, and if he dropped a Mama Yeti there, I'm not saving Ray. 
Right, like I'm I'm rebinding the Mama Yeti and let him shoot this down. Because the Mama Yeti's pretty tough to deal with. I'm I'm pretty confident you're right that there's no Mama Yetis, but I don't know what he's playing at this point, so I think this was fine, because um, we know he's playing a bunch of speed troops. So you know he was going to play something out before he actually attacked, so holding up the rune mine there to deal with, uh, and just waiting until he... Um, just waiting until he went to go to attacks and rune binding it then, so it doesn't get the trigger, I think is fine. So we're going to bend this Seeker for another Seeker. Seems good. So now that we drew the other Seeker, I kind of almost just want to hold up Excruciate here and Excruciate whatever I have to. I don't know if I want to play this voice out and get blown out by a piece. Like, we haven't seen a single Decree, and we know he plays them. And, like, we don't really need the advantage off of uh, voice right now. So yeah, I think I'm just going to hold up Excruciate here. Like... A, a more finding a Mordrum's gift just wins the game. Make a Lasgar's Vengeance earlier should be bug right. Yeah, yeah, I don't think Discombobulate can make, or I, I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be able to make banned cards. I would verify that on the forums though, but I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to make banned cards. Okay. We're just going to take this uh, Phoenix, we're not going to kill it. We don't really care about it. We're going to dig for, boy or for a uh, Wardrum's Gift here. I guess we don't have to bin. Uh, we don't want to bin anything to that right now. No Wardrum's Gift. Okay, uh... There's a Morgan's Gift. So I kept the Seeker in my hand, um, specifically because the following turn we can potentially cheat this in off a Scribe. Um, so I decided to keep the Seeker in my hand there and not bother killing the uh, Devoted Exile, specifically because of that reason. And we're going to call three... We'll go ahead and loot away one of the... Or we'll just go ahead and loot away the one of these voices, yep. Again, just in case. Because, like, if the first Seeker doesn't end the game here, the second one most certainly does. And we're pretty close to hard casting this. Coiling, okay. So now we're going to have to trade... Is this a misclick here? Why would he attack with this? Rage 1, life drain, just to gain the life? I was like, okay, that's a misclick. Oh, that was quick. Is somebody sniping me? Somebody challenging me to a duel? I bet you it's Lime. It's 10 out of 10 Lime. And he's coming in with main deck Brinks. Kicked me off my high horse here. Oh no, can't be Lime. This guy's got into the unknown. Sleeves. This hand is atrocious. Hand's great. Yeah, but would you actually ever sport a sleeve of a sapphire card? Like, come on. Like, I mean, maybe if you wanted to be like cheeky and throw your opponents off like what lime killers playing sapphire what is this
Okay, so this is classic candles. So basically for this match, we're going to be rushing to Seeker game one. So we're just going to go ahead and theorize like ASAP here. Um, and then we can also set up to scribe in a Sabertooth next turn. Uh, so we're going to bend the other theorize because it's now useless. We'll drop scribe next turn and set up to saber or, uh, cheat in the Sabertooth the following turn if he doesn't kill the scribe. Last ever deck I put together, try. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with Sapphire Lime? Come on. It's best color in A. The fact that we have all these remnants in our hand really sucks. Like, this is kind of our line of victory game one. Um, so I think it's just relevant just to give her all in on it. See if we get it. it I mean, it could be. I wouldn't be surprised. Frustrating to play games and with... Yeah. I agree. Discard decks are no fun to play against. I mean, they're good. They're relevant strategies, but they're never fun to play against. Okay, so if we block one of these, we're almost certainly getting burned, right? So we're just we're just taking this. Because again, this scribe is what's gonna get us super far ahead. Or not super far ahead, but it's what's gonna bring us back into this game. Yeah, thought so. Seeker off the top, let's go. Uh Runebind's also good. Seeker off the top, let's go. Even Ka actually would be fine here. Morgan's Gift is not good, okay. Uh, but it's still fine because it means we get to bin one of these. She didn't play. Shoot a candle down. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to take a few damage from this remnant because we're kind of obligated to hold up Runebine here for uh, Choir. Um, yep, yeah. so I'm going to go Remnant. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat the two damage just because Choir kills us. If he does inquire, we can still use the rune bind to try and save ourselves here. Oh. That felt good. Okay. So he's going to try and push lethal here. And then we're going to rune another one. Take three. Uh, if we had a fast shard in hand, we'd be in so much better shape right now. Uh, but that's fine because we can go this, shoot down this. And then... We're just going to play the ray out. We're going to slam. Do we slam with everything? No, I think we just slam like this. Because I don't want to loot away anything in my hand. I have removal plus Morgan's gift. Um, yeah, I don't want to loot away anything in my hand. So we're just going to slam like this. We'll hold the ray back. And then the following turn, we're going to cheat something into play with ray. So we drew a shard. I think choir is free at this point, isn't it? Uh, 
Uh, we couldn't have gotten any value out of Excruciate. Why would we want to dump this? This is a removal spell. I think we just swing with one. I played the second one out there just in case he had removal for the first one so we didn't get the trigger off it. Kill candle here. So we got to be in the scribe because we got to kill the candle, but it's fine. This sets us up to uh, get a free cheat in next turn, so. And it also sets us up to grab a uh, diamond shard for a caw. Wax kit. Hello, heart. Use this yet. He might have, yeah, he's probably got lethal here. Unfortunately, we're just gonna get domed. Domed. Oh, he didn't draw it. Okay. We could potentially just kill him on the backswing here. Uh, no, we want diamond for Ka. So we're not hard casting a caw anyways, so we can go ahead and guarantee something on top of our library. Ah, uh, Runebind's actually good. Runebind's very good. I kind of want to just play this Mordrum's Gift out, just to put another body on the board. Because we can still get another... Like, is that... is that bad? Because, like, we can hard cast all our... we can hard cast all our fatties at this point. I want to hold this diamond shard. So I'm just going to chip with the saber tooth. I want to keep the diamond shard just because we can hard cast Kaw and, and close the game out with Kaw. This should pretty much end the game here. Burn spell? Nope, okay. I mean, he hasn't had it yet. Maybe he was fearing room by the whole time. Uh, can we end the game this turn with a Morgan's gift? Block, block. He's forced to block the two saber tooths, which means we just die to this coming off. Uh, we do. Was this double? Four, eight, ten. Yeah, we end the game. Okay, we got him. We got him. We got him.
GG opponent. Why didn't you cheat the scribe? You practically said I ruined by. Well, I'll, I don't know. <laughs> Do I really need to? I got, I got no answer to that. Uh, this is a star here. This is a star here. Rune mines are bad. We're on the place. These verdicts are going to be significant. Actually, I kind of want these verdicts over jouncing. Cause way too slow. 61 Great Machine with Seeker. Let's go. Do I actually want these verdicts on the draw? No, I don't. I want removal. He's playing, uh... He's playing... Yeah, we're gonna play 61. I'm fine on 61. I'm on the draw. 61's fine. There's nothing else I really want to cut. Um, from my list. Because, like, I want to be cheating Seekers out ASAP. Uh, Scribes are good blockers. They allow us to cheat out really early. <laughs> Played all the bad games. Do you really always want Verdicts first them? 61 is always wrong. Uh, where's Novi to back me up here? Where's Novi? I need that backup from Novi. Yeah, this hand is keepable for sure. We get a guarantee scars him on three. Verdict is really good, and I agree that that's a card you want on the play, but I don't know if that's a card you want on the draw. You know what? Remember what I told you the other night? Never tell me the odds. <laughs> I need like a pair of aviators there. Never tell me the odds. Slam the aviators. The old super troopers look. We're gonna get to blow him out so hard with the Scars of War. Uh, do we Iron Inquisitor here? No, we save Iron Inquisitor. We do not Iron Inquisitor here. Because we're, we're Scarsing no matter what next turn. It does make a difference, you just notice it. Yeah, I've been lucky enough not to notice it so far. I mean, I noticed it back in the Kagu days, back when we played 61 Green Machine Kagu. I'm just say, if he grows these candles out of range of scars, this is going to feel really bad. Which he might do here. Okay, he can't. Good. We blow him out. So next turn we're going to slam uh, Inquisitor plus Ray and just make three bodies. Opponent is definitely going to cry. And then if we find a shard we get two more and get back to Seeker the following turn to clean them up. Brother Stash you can add... Yeah, Whip is good. Scars is just better right now. Okay, this is the choir. Second choir is gonna is gonna kick me right in the gonads here. Okay, so now this is why. Uh, let me show you why Iron Inquisitor plus Ray is or Iron Inquisitor is so good. So we're just going to make two bodies here. Next turn we're going to make another body. So Whip is a bit faster, but Whip is actually technically worse on the... Whip is worse on the... On the draw, I find. To be honest. Okay, so I'm just going to bend this because I can just keep making bodies here, which is actually really relevant. 
Oh man, we just get a seeker room actually, so we don't care. Uh, I guess I could attack with the Iron Inquisitor. This is a. Uh, I missed a point of damage here. Uh, we're gonna keep this. We're just gonna bend the ice. This game has been greasy. We've hit just like we've literally hit the perfect curve of cards just to totally annihilate them. And like, if we really, if, if we didn't draw. Honestly, if we didn't draw the Morgan's Gift there, I literally could have just gone, um, I literally could have looted off of Raid, made a body, and then slammed, uh, Voice, and then just bin my whole hand to make bodies on, in response to him declaring an attack. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So, like, we weren't, we were so insulated that game. His hand is really bad. We cannot keep this hand. We have zero filtering. His hand's, wow. <sighs> I mean, we do have removal on two. We've got, if we draw a shard, we can turn three scry, but this hand is. This hand's really good if we find a ray or theorize. But we're playing against blood, and I don't like, I don't like risking drawing. Okay, there we go. I don't like having to rely on top decking shards against blood. Or against mill, sorry, not blood. I mean, look what I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing three shard reanimator with roots to splash for diamond. <laughs> I am like as greedy as you can be. And not to mention, I just want to, I just want to game versus candles on 61 cards and drew absolutely pure perfectly, like just perfect. Um, like I am, I am greedy and lucky. <laughs> Today, the other night I was not so lucky. The other night I was nowhere near as lucky. Okay, so the mill matchup gets significantly worse for us. Um, now that we cut the combo from our deck. Yep. Yeah, I played uh, I played a Blood Sapphire uh, mid range control -y list, control esque list earlier today, and I brought it in versus that, and it just blew him out, just blew him right out. And then I also lost to a Blood Sapphire like more mid range list, on um, game three, and that's because I misplayed. But again, the Eternal Curator was just really clutch in that match. Like his primary win con was to dig for like both both. Both decks' primary win con were to dig for uh, multiple Dementor Whispers. And, uh, yeah, so you just brought that in. It kind of just killed their win con. And then, like, the fact that it has Invincible, like, they have such a hard time dealing with it. Um, we just kind of have to dig here at this point. We're okay bending one of these uh, roots. Blood. This gives us Diamond. We've got our... Sorry, this gives us Sapphire. So we're going to bend... The sapphire one, and we're going to bend the car. Okay. I'm gonna hold up runebind. Uh, slash get my third threshold here, just so I can cycle this next turn. We'll grab the diamond chart off this, because we have this gives us our double sapphire. Next turn, if we decide we want to champ power, which I doubt we're going to. Uh, then I also want to put his first Demented Whisper on hold here. For a turn. Okay. Oh, I forgot to cycle this. Rip. That was a misplay. I supposed to cycle this for the Diamond Shard. Because hard casting call in this match is relevant. Um. I think we're just binning the remnant here, depending on what we draw.
That's fine. I'm not bidding a rune bind on that. Sabertooth's okay. Base, I guess. Yeah, I did. Uh, so, Ollie made a good point, and he said roots are a really good way to just kind of combat Runebind coming into the meta, as well as uh, your deck. Like, our deck has a lot of filter. Um, so, we went to four roots that all splashed a diamond shard just so we can hard cast caught at the end of the day. Yeah, actually, it, uh, it's, it, it, it doesn't come up often. Um, it's going to mill here. It doesn't come up often, but it's it's won me a lot of games. I will say that. It has... I forgot to do it again. That's right. Uh, okay, so we can't... We can't rune bind plus uh, Morgan's Gift here. Which he almost certainly has some way to interact with me, correct? Or do I just go for it and hope he doesn't? Like, it seems like we're playing more control-esque. No, he's got to be holding up a counter. There's no way. The other thing that's really nice about running the four roots is uh, I've double secret people before. Um, so I secret, I hard casted a seeker one, or sorry, no, I uh, cheated a seeker in. Yeah, he is, he is control. Okay. I cheated a seeker in, um, and then I needed the second seeker to go off like turn, like a couple turns later. Uh, so I ended up ruin binding my own seeker and then cycling a shard, um, and then getting the second seeker play. Well, the only thing is we, we would have got blown out, right? So I think this is the right line because we can literally just one shot him here. So he's just holding up rune by now, which we're okay. Oh, GG. Got him. So yeah, you gotta do some stupid things with uh, having rune binds in her deck plus the roots. Like, it, it comes up more often than not. I can just, I'll just send you the link here after this. Or actually, we should be able to find our last match. Our last match was not too long ago. That's the current list that I'm running right now. Uh, so he's control. So this is bad. This is bad. Um, these are good. Runebind's good here. And then Eternal Curators are actually really good. Um, we'll just keep a secret in just for a catch-all. He's blood-based control. So someone's removal just dies to Eternal Curator. And then just like running him out of cards. Especially since, like, they draw a ton of cards. And so, by turn 5, usually they've drawn a few cards. Um, and then you can Eternal Curator them. And most of the time, they have less cards in their deck than you. So, you can let, just sit there and let them uh, mill themselves out. 
Um, so, like, Eternal Curator has just served a lot of purposes. Like, it's actually been a great card. Yeah, hand's good. The fact that this has Invincible, like, this card is just really good. It's actually just nuts versus Mono Blood, too. Takes out one of their primary win cons. Um, it uh, doesn't die to any of the removal. Like, the card is just kind of nutty. No problem, Vestin. I did misplay once last game, so we're going to mark that down. Rude. Probably taking Verdict here. Could see Theorize, I guess. I would say Verdict. Just wait till I chill Masker even till I... <laughs> Some guy, uh, uh, one of my games versus one of the Blood Sapphire uh, players, he had to do that. Um, he had to triple massacre to get rid of my curator, but then I already had, I, I had, uh, after he played two, um, after he played the first two, I played a Kaw, and then he played the third one, and then Kaw just got there. He just couldn't deal with Kaw. Yeah, Kaw is the best card in the deck. Kaw is literally the reason to play this deck. And so the best thing about Kaw is Kaw, Kaw gives us a reanimator target. Um, Yeah, actually, you're right. I should have there. So I'm, I'm used to playing the more aggressive decks. And so the more aggressive decks, I don't care about blood till later. Uh, so usually I play that out first so that if I draw, like I'm more likely to draw a rem remnant of innovation slash ways to make this not do damage to myself. Okay, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, in this matchup specifically, um, that was technically the loser play. I think I just slam scribe here, make him have it. Even though I don't have protection for this uh, scribe, I think I just slam it and make him have it. Because if he doesn't have it, we just get to get really far ahead. Draw three cards, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. The Kaw is just so flexible. Like, that's the thing. Like, Reanimator now has literally a card where you can just reanimate one target and win the game. Whereas, like, before it didn't have that. Nice. I'm okay not giving him a card here because he's obviously not male. Okay. Now, yeah, so right here, not playing that remnant in the order that I did feels bad because now I can't voice this turn. But we can go ahead and chant power because we don't care now. Three, three times. <laughs> Don't think Excruciate is going to be as good in this match. Um, let's go ahead and bid that. So you can follow up voice next turn. But yeah, that was your your eight smiles. That was a little loose. I didn't need to care. I don't care about my life total in this match. Because you control. 
But like sequencing your shards is super correct in certain matchups in the meta right now because, like I said, like the the, the couple points of damage you can save from playing these remnants uh, is very relevant. Nope, no more auctioneers in the seventy five at all. Mill combo is not really a thing, um, and like siding into the combo is just not really that. It's not really like it's good, but it's not like amazing versus the current decks in the meta. Um, we're just like having curators versus like say turns is just so much better. I have not tried Oinkers, no. I am a non-believer when it comes to Oinkers. I know Ollie says they're good. Um, but like I think, I know, like, uh, I don't know. I don't think the card's as good as, it, as everyone thinks it is. Oinkers is also bugged with draw spells. That's another, that's another reason. That's fair. That's fine. Voice is just such a good card. This was everything the deck was missing that last bash, that, that first bash that I played in. Not that this would have helped me in any of the matches that I, or it would have helped me in one of the matches that I lost to. Probably. I don't know if it would have been actually that much better. What's going on, Cal Raz? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, do we have any targets in our bin for Morgan's Gift? We have a Seeker. Seeker isn't doing much, so I think we're just going to theorize, hope that we can take this off of, uh... Hunt Shadowing. What What is Hunt Shadowing? I'm confused. I think we're just going to get rid of this other Excruciate at this point, because, again, it's not doing anything in this match. I mean, I, I know we can target our own troops with it. Um... I think I would like to just get the diamond shard from this at this point. We'll go ahead and loot. So we find another Morden's gift. Uh, I don't want to make my Morden's gift susceptible, so we're going to bend the ray. Ray's not really doing anything here. Whereas Morden's Gift, we can still just end the game, especially since we have an instant discard outlet and we're drawing two cards. What's up, Peter? I think Sting needs to be... Needs to play some, I don't think Sting's good this meta. Um, I don't really think the card belongs in any 75, to be honest with you. Um, if the meta goes more controlly, then maybe. But, like, here, here's the thing with Sting. I know it has multi-purpose, but, like, what... When do you ever really care about countering something for three? Um, in this meta, where like we more we care more about killing things in this meta, so like specifically we care about killing anything in Diamond Wild, and we we feel like killing anything in um, well anything and everything in uh oh I can't remember the name of the deck um turns. Just gonna bin this. Yeah, I'm just gonna bin this sapphire shard here. Keep digging. I need a target for these Morgan's gifts to try and close the game out. Okay, that's fair. You can hit. Yeah, you can hit choir off sting. Sure, but like, do we actually care about that? Is the only thing. Yeah, but we, we have better ways to kill it. Like, I don't think it's really relevant considering we just have better ways to instant kill Annie. Uh, 
Oh, uh, we're not playing Discombobulate at all in the deck. And I don't think it belongs in Reanimator. GG opponent. Oh, gotcha. That's fair. That's fair. Are you so are we talking what are we talking like what what cards are you talking about putting or what decks are you talking about putting these cards into, uh, Peter? Uh you know what? Let's move on to something else. I played a lot of games with Reanimator. I think you guys kind of get the idea of where I'm going with Reanimator at this point. Um, let's go back to... Well, you know, we could play... We could play some... Some Italian's uh, 75 from the Bash. I actually want to... 